With the 5-1 system, we play with one setter. After the service, the setter will always move to the setting position, which is on the purple spot. So if the setter starts in the back, like on position 5, you will have 3 attackers on position 4, 3 and 2. But when the setter starts at the front, like on position 2, you only have 2 attackers on 4 and 3. That's because the 3 players that start in the back cannot jump attack from within the 3 meter line. So let's fill in the other positions. Opposite to the setter we have the diagonal, then we have 2 outsides and 2 middle players. When the opponent serves and we score a point, we rotate and we get the service. The player on position 1 will serve. So if you forget, forget your position, look at where your opposite is standing and you will know where to be. After the service, everybody will go to their natural position, which is as follows. We have the outsides on the left, the middles in the middle, and the setter and diagonal on the right. When the setter starts in the front, he will be on the right front. When the diagonal starts in the front, it will be like this. Alright, so let's talk about receiving a service. While receiving a service, we all will always pass with three people, and they cover the whole field. We leave the setter out of the service receive pass because we want the setter to be setting. But how do we get that done without breaking the rules of our starting position? Well, your starting position is restricted by the players directly next to you, in front of you or behind you. So although the setter has to stay behind the diagonal player on mid front, left of the outside player on right back, and right of the middle player on left back, it doesn't matter for him where the outside player on left front will be. So we want our outside player on left front to pass. This means that we can move the left front outside to the back. As long as he doesn't go further to the back than the middle on left back is. Like this, our setter is still within his boundaries and every passer can take care of one third of the field, just like that. Okay, so let's look at rotation number two. The setter has to move away to the back again and now we can do it like this. We want our outside to pass again because he's a better passer than the middle usually and the restrictions of the outside are as follows so as you can see he's still within his restrictions if he moves like this. Alright, so rotation 3. We already have three people that can pass, that's great. And in rotation 1 and 2 I focus on the people in the back. Let's focus more on those in the front. Do you remember the position everyone goes to after service? Outsides go to the left. They're our main attackers when things go wrong. But right now the outside is all the way on the right. So we want to have our outside available for attacking. That's why we start like this. Alright, so rotation 4. Note that uh, it's pretty similar. The setter can already be in the setting position. And note that uh, mid on right front moves to the right a bit so that he doesn't block the vision of the outside on right back. I didn't show this in earlier rotations, but front players always move away so that back players have vision and space to pass. Alright, so rotation 5. It's an easy one as well. Just like this, the setter is already at setting position and the middle and outside move to the left so that the outside can attack. Rotation 6, also pretty easy, setter just moves out of the pass and the outside takes over. Alright, so after receiving the service, everybody goes back to their natural position, as I showed you. However, there is one exception to this rule, that's rotation 6 that I just showed you. As you can see, when we receive the service, the diagonal would have to go to the right after the service and the outside would have to go to the left, but that's a long walk. And if the service is quick, they won't have time to get ready to attack. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to have them stay on their own side of the court and they just move over here and they will be ready to attack. Alright, so how do we defend an attack? Of course, we're standing on our standard positions when we're defending an attack. And we wait in this position until we see from which side the opponent attacks. Let's assume they attack from the left. We'd move like this. We have two blockers. The diagonal moves to the left. Everyone moves like this. And the diagonal takes the whole 3 meter line, as you can see. Uh, the back players take all smashes. And the middle player takes high balls in the corner as well. 
So when you attack from the right side, it would be the same, just mirrored. And as you can see, the same principles apply. Now, when you attack from the middle, the attack is usually very quick and we can't move much. But there's a big spot where the opponent can tip the ball. In order to prevent that, the front players have to move in to, to prevent this. Because the outside players, uh, the back players, sorry, they hold their ground to receive smashes.